video is about solving linear systems of equations by graphing. A solution to a system of equations is an x-y pair that satisfies both equations. What I mean by satisfies is that when you plug in x and y, it is true for both equations. It makes the left side equal to the right side. So this example asks us, is 2, 0 the solution to the following system? Now, 2, 0 has to work in both equations in order for it to be the system. So let's first check it in the first equation. We know the point 2, 0 is x comma y. So that means 0 is our y value, 2 is our x value. When I simplify the right side of this equation, negative 4 plus 4, sure enough, is 0. Now, 0 equals 0, so it is true that 2, 0 is a solution to the first equation. But we have to see if it's a solution to the second equation as well. Plugging in the same x and y value, we see that this is 6 minus 0 equals 10. Simplifying the left side of the equation, I get 6. 6 does not equal 10, so 2 comma 0 is not a solution to this equation. And since it didn't work in both equations, then it is not a solution to the system. In order for it to be a solution to the system, it has to work in both of the equations. Rather than using guess and check to just plug things in to find the solution, we can actually use graphing to find the solution. Uh, of where the two lines cross. That's what we're looking for. The xy point that appears on both lines. These are both the equations of lines. We'll draw the lines, we'll see where they cross, and that's the xy point that they have in common. I prefer a slope intercept uh, as my method for graphing. So I'm going to get y by itself and use the slope intercept form to graph the equations. So I take my first equation, isolate the y, 2 thirds x plus 2 thirds. And I'll switch colors, isolate y in the second equation as well. Negative x plus 8. Divide everything by negative 2. We get positive 1 half x minus 4. All right, I'm ready to graph these two lines. The red line is going to start at the y-intercept of positive 2 thirds. So I go to the y-axis and I plot the point positive 2 thirds. And then the slope for that equation tells me to go down two units over three to the right. So I'll go down two units over three to the right as neatly as I can. Down two units over three. And I can continue the slope in the other direction as well. So I can really be as neat as possible. And then I connect my red dots for the red line using a ruler if you have one. Now I'm going to switch to blue and graph the blue line. The blue line has a y-intercept of negative 4, so I go to my y-axis and find negative 4. It has a slope of positive 1 half, so I'm going to rise 1 and then go over 2 to the right. I can already see where they cross, right? I'm going to continue my line in both directions, connect the blue dots to get the blue line. And it looks like they cross right here at the point 4, negative 2. It's important to label the point where they cross. I think that 4, negative 2 is the solution. I'm going to plug it into both equations to check if it's the solution for x and y. So I'm going to plug in 4 for my x value, 2 for the y, or uh, negative 2 for the y. I simplify this side of the equation. Does 8 minus 6 equal 2? It sure does. So it works in the first equation. Let's see if it works in the second equation. Plug in 4 for x negative 2 for y. 4 plus 4 equals 8. Sure enough, it does. And that's how I know that 4 negative 2 is the correct solution to both. It's not always necessary to check your answer in both equations if it's clear to you where they cross on the graph, but it's always a good idea if you want to double check. Okay, there are three types of systems. The first one that we looked at uh, is like the first example on this slide. It's two lines that cross only in one place. And so this system has only one solution. It's the xy point where they cross. It's called an independent system. If you're asked to classify your system, you would want to call it independent. In this next slide, it's hard to see, but there's actually two lines here that overlap at every single point. Okay, so really it's the same line twice. And so what we have here is infinitely many solutions because everywhere that they overlap, is an xy pair that they share. Infinitely many solutions because there's a solution here, there's a solution here, there's a solution here, and so on and so forth. And we would call this system dependent. They depend on each other. 
And then the final system is a pair of parallel lines that never cross and never will cross. So they have no x, y point in common. This is a no solution system. And we classify that as inconsistent. So let's see on the next slide how we will be asked to use these words. All right, we're given three systems and asked to determine the number of solutions and how we would classify them as independent, dependent, or inconsistent. So I'm going to do this by not even graphing them. I'm just going to isolate y, and get them in slope-intercept form, and compare the two equations. So I'll take my first equation, get y by itself, two-thirds x minus eight over three. And take the second equation, get y by itself. Divide by negative 6. Simplify those fractions, and I get positive 2 thirds x minus 8 over 3. Now, when I look at this equation, in this equation, I can visualize graphing it without actually having to graph it. They both start at the same y-intercept, and they have the same slope. When it's a same y-intercept, same slope, that means it's the same line, and therefore this is one of the cases where there are infinitely many solutions. So the first thing it asks us is how many solutions. We say infinitely many solutions. And it also asks us how we would classify it. So we should remember that the infinitely many solutions is classified as dependent. So it has, it's asking us for both of these answers. How many solutions and how would we classify it? All right, let's try the next one. We're going to isolate y again in both equations. y equals negative 3 over 2x minus 2. Switch colors, isolate y in the second equation. Negative one third x plus one third. And compare the two equations that we're dealing with. They have different y intercepts and different slopes. So they're going to start at different places and have different slopes, which means that this is kind of your typical system, which is only going to cross in one place. And therefore, it has one solution. And when I ask to find what it is, we just ask how many solutions it has. It has one solution, which we classify as an independent system. And the final one, let's isolate y. So 2y equals negative x plus 4. y equals negative 1 half x plus 2. Isolate y in the second equation. You probably see where this one's going. Negative 1 half x plus 3 over 2. Compare the two equations that we have here. It looks like they have two different y-intercepts that are going to start at different places on the y-axis but then they both have the slope of negative one over two. So they're gonna both go down one over two to the right, down one over two to the right. And these two lines will never cross each other because they have the same slope. Uh, because they have the same slope and a different y-intercept, there is no solution. They don't start at the same place and they'll never catch up to each other, which we classify as an inconsistent system. And that is all.